Hey guys, welcome back! It's been a while since I made an update video on the 3D Printed Everything Machine project. I've been really busy with the launch of my Kickstarter, but now that it's finished... I've had some time to get back to the Everything Machine. And I have some pretty big news. When I started the project, my intention was to create a mini desktop machine for makers that could convert into a million different machines, and for it to be as versatile as possible. I think I accomplished that, but I always suspected that at some point my personal project needs would eventually outgrow what the machine is capable of. I mean, I still think the machine is great, especially for beginners, but I feel the machine has three major issues that really limits its potential. The first is stability. 3D printed plastic is only so strong, so you're going to get issues like flexing or creep, especially if you try printing really large attachments. Another issue is size. My projects have been getting larger, and I thought about printing larger attachments and conversions, but my 3D printer is only so big, so I was limited there, and even if I could print larger attachments, the base machine isn't heavy enough to support them. And the third is just the time and effort required to switch between configurations. For occasional hobby use it's fine, but I find the constant switching to be really annoying when I'm working on complex projects that require many different machine setups. It's just too time consuming. So I've been thinking a lot about how best to proceed with the project, now that we're getting close to hitting the practical limits of what 3D printing alone can achieve. Again, I think the machine is great the way it is, but for hobbyists like myself, who feel their needs are starting to outgrow what the machine is capable of, I wanted to find a solution. So with that in mind, I was scrolling through our Discord to see what some of the backers have done with their machines. By the way, if you're a backer who hasn't joined the Discord yet, you should. Some of the guys there have started sharing their own mods, and a lot of them are really good. One backer in particular built a gumball using aluminum extrusion. I really loved that idea. I felt it added stability, and if you've ever worked with aluminum extrusion before, you know it has these channels running the entire length where you can easily attach anything you want. So seeing what that backer did really inspired me to start working on what I think I'm going to call Gumball Station. It's a cube of aluminum extrusion that will be an add-on to the original machine that I think will solve all of the problems I mentioned and a lot more. So I reached out to a manufacturer in China because I was there a couple years ago at a trade show and I noticed that they love to design and make machines out of nothing but aluminum extrusion and off-the-shelf parts. And that's exactly what I wanted this add-on to be. I'm imagining a kit where all the parts are shipped in a box, and since the buyer will assemble it themselves, all the parts are over the counter and nothing's custom, and since all the parts are coming directly from China, the price will hopefully be very affordable. I received my first machine the other day, it only took me about an hour to assemble it. This isn't the finished machine. I actually have quite a few modifications I'm still going to make, but I thought it would be a good idea to give you guys a sneak peek and talk about some of the things I want to add, and maybe get some suggestions and feedback from the community. So for the motor, it's going to be belt driven and powered by the spindle motor on the gumball with this timing belt pulley. Or if you want to keep your gumball for other uses, you can just buy another one of these $20 spindle motors and mount it in the back as a dedicated motor if you want. Okay, so let's talk about what the machine's capable of. First is the saw function. The original gumball takes 4 inch saw blades. This will hold 8 inch, which is a huge upgrade in itself. There was just no way to run 8 inch blades on the original machine while maintaining any sort of stability. It's going to come with an optional laser cut table that you can quickly bolt on that will let you use the machine as a lapidary trim saw with an adjustable fence. The idea is that you'll be able to choose the parts you want for your kit, depending on what you plan on or need to use the machine for. Or you can always add additional parts in the future if it turns out you need them. For cooling, you have a steel pan at the bottom that will hold a gallon of water. All the edges are sealed with silicone sealant to keep it waterproof. There's an integrated pump in the back, and there's currently one hose for your water supply. But one of the upgrades I plan is to add a second hose to the other side. After putting the machine through its paces this week, I really feel my personal workflow would benefit from a second hose, but again, that would be optional. If you only need one, you could just order your kit to come with one. The table also has a 90 degree guide in the back, and if you want, you can 3D print custom guides of various angles. And if you swap out the saw blade for a diamond plate, the machine can now function as an intarsia grinder. The machine also has a cross slide that can let you cut very precise slabs. By the way, the red you're seeing on the lead screw, that's not rust, that's a red grease. The entire machine is made from either stainless steel or aluminum, so you don't ever have to worry about rust. There's a millimeter ruler here for measuring your slabs, with locking thumb screws for both the X and Y travel. 
One obvious upgrade I planned on from the beginning is adding a stepper motor to automatically feed material into the saw, but even if you don't want to add that, getting the saw to run automatically, that's still possible. All you need to do is wrap a string around the handle several times and just hang a weight from it. You can now feed the saw with gravity, and you can even use the thumb screw to adjust tension so that you have a level of control over how fast the material will feed into the saw. You have a positionable clamp for holding your material, and the splash guard can be removed in seconds to give you more room and to take advantage of what else the machine is capable of. The machine has a double-sided mandrel where I currently have a Jacob shock installed, but I already ordered an ER16 collet to replace it. An ER collet is more accurate, but matching the collet to what's already in the gumball will integrate the tooling of the two spindles perfectly, which is obviously ideal. You'll be able to use the same tooling for both. The additional collet will let you add pretty much any tooling you want. A lapidary plate, grinding tools of all shapes and sizes. You could even install a small cabbing wheel on this side, but the saw end also has a threaded rod. So if you wanted, you could add a removable chuck to that side as well. Really any type of chuck you wanted. Because it mounts to the aluminum extrusion channels, the cross slide can be moved into any position you want, in both the X and Y direction. So you could even add a tool holder to the cross slide and use it as a lathe. I plan on doing just that. I have an upcoming project where a lapidary lathe would be incredible. You have a mounting channel across the entire front of the assembly that will be getting a Z-axis. Adding this and a clamp to hold the gumball's micromotor would let you use it as a lapidary drill press, or if you add stepper motors to all three axes, you would now have a lapidary CNC machine capable of 3D carving in stone. Or you can remove the micromotor from its holder, and since the water supply is positionable, you can grind your projects manually inside the enclosure. I'm currently using this piece of laser cut acrylic as a splash guard, which makes the machine reasonably splash free. But the plan is to design a vacuum formed bubble that will enclose the entire front of the machine. This will make it watertight and allow you to use oil instead of water if you want it. The bottom of the tank has two holes, one for recirculating the water to feed the pump, and the other is for easily draining the tank when you're done working. To drain the tank, you just stick this hose in a bottle, remove the clamp, and it's as easy as that. I think this project has a lot of potential. If all the upgrades I mentioned work out the way I expect, this will end up being, in my opinion, the best and most affordable lapidary and metallurgical saw on the market, hands down. And it's going to be a lot more than just the saw. For the longest time, I put off starting a Patreon because I felt I wasn't making enough content to justify it. And besides, enough of you guys backed the 3D printed portion of the project to keep the channel and the project going. But creating this the way I envision it isn't going to be cheap. It's going to be expensive and very time consuming. So if you're interested in getting one of these gumball stations, I've come up with two ways you can support the project. One is just become a Patreon supporter. When the machine is finished and ready to ship, Patreon supporters will get a private link where they have an opportunity to join in a group buy. As an alternative way to support the project, I thought I would sell something that I made with the machine. So I filmed a video a while back where I made an X-Acto knife with a ruby blade. That video went viral and a bunch of people asked me if I would make one for them. I had to decline because it was just too much work. I would have to charge a fortune. And besides, it really wasn't a practical or usable knife, but it did get me thinking that maybe I could make a more practical and usable variation of an EDC knife with a ruby blade. And this is what I came up with. This is far from the final product, it's just a proof of concept to test if it'll work. The blade is ugly because I shaped the blade and cut the bevels very roughly by hand, but the final product is going to be cut with a picosecond laser and all the facets will be cut evenly and polished beautifully. Believe it or not, this is actually a really good knife. Is Ruby the best blade material? Well, it's probably not the most practical, but it definitely has some unique properties and at the very least, it'll be a beautiful conversation piece. Ruby and Sapphire are among the hardest materials on earth, just under diamond, at 10 to 20 times harder than steel. What this means is that it can be sharpened to an atomic level of sharpness, and the edge would potentially last forever, never needing to be sharpened. But this added hardness comes with a price. Sapphire is much more brittle than steel, so it's not the type of EDC you're going to be using to pry open paint cans. It should be used more like a scalpel or an X-Acto knife. As a matter of fact, some of the sharpest and most expensive surgical scalpels available are made from sapphire. It's great for paper, cardboard boxes, plastic, tape, rubber. I find it works exceptionally well on leather. And Ruby has an interesting property of brightly glowing under a black light. This video does it no justice. In person, it looks incredible. Because sapphire and Ruby are only second to diamond in hardness, it can be used to mark metal and glass, 
It can even be used to scratch test the diamonds to tell if they're real. After all this cutting, and I actually cut for hours off camera too, I can easily shave my arm with the blade. And again, this prototype was shaped by hand and by eye. So the final product I ship will not only look much better, it'll be far sharper than this. So JLC CNC reached out and offered to provide the parts for this project, and they absolutely nailed it. The quality is seriously impressive. Tight tolerances, clean edges, everything came out exactly how I designed it. And the best part? I had the finished parts in my hands in about a week. Placing the order was super easy. Just upload your CAD files to their website, choose your material and finish, and you'll get a quote almost instantly. From there, it's just a few clicks to finalize everything. They keep you updated the whole way and parts show up fast and ready to go. Big thanks to JLC CNC for making this build possible. If you're working on a project and need high quality CNC parts, check them out. Links in the description. So I think I'm going to do a ruby version, a sapphire version, and I might do a tungsten carbide version also. All types will have a spring-loaded ruby ball bearing as a detent that should be visible through the clear sapphire, so it would also glow under a black light too. All right, so I like to try and keep my videos under 10 minutes, so I think we're about out of time. This new direction the project's taking doesn't mean the 3D printed portion is over. I'm still working on 3D printed attachments, and the guys on our Discord have been pumping out a bunch also. This is just an add-on in case you're like me and you're looking for more capabilities. The Gumball Station will also be getting its own assortment of 3D printed attachments. So if you're interested in building your own Gumball, Gumball Station, or both, I'll put all the information in the description. By the way, thanks to everyone who supported the Kickstarter, it was a huge success. The funds took about a month to be released and clear the bank after the campaign ended. That was about a couple weeks ago. We immediately ordered materials, and I should be getting the production sample for approval in the mail any day now. So we're still looking good for shipping to begin around the end of August. Alright guys, I think that'll do it for this one. As usual, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.